Welcome guys, it's time for the seasonal recap. Like we did last season, it's uh, going to be a tradition to make a recap of the season. I know it's not over yet, but um, I'm probably not going to play any more Constructed this year, so I could as well just do it right now and explain my whole climb from um, Legend uh, no, from rank 16 to legend this year. Uh, well, also this year, but I basically mean this season. So, uh, this season was, of course, um, highly influenced by the new expansion. Um, I've seen some people writing like, oh, it's just old decks, I face the old uh, zoo and hunter stuff all over again. <coughs> but I, for myself, found the meta to be uh, shaken up and more diverse now. Um, last season was pretty much all Hunter and Zoo, especially in the higher ranks, um, for quite some time. But uh, not now a lot of classes showed up, um, especially Paladins were pretty popular, um, or became more popular. And you saw a lot of s other strong decks, um, Mech, Mage, and <clears throat> uh, different forms of Zeus, Mech Zeus, Mech Rattle Zeus, um, Token Zeus, um, Mech Rogues, uh, New Miracle Rogues, Mech Shamans, uh, Mech Warriors even, Secret Mages, Freeze Mages, Mech Priests, Death Rattle Priests, Control Priests. Um, I think there was a lot of stuff that you could actually face in the meta this season. So, overall, the expansion was probably a good thing for the diversity of the meta, and we'll have to see which decks will uh, evolve even further, which decks will um, decrease in popularity and such, but um, overall, it seems to be a little more diverse. Um, yep, so let's talk about the decks that I played this season. Um, we have two pre-GVG decks, which is first the Death Rattle Hunt, uh, not Hunter, but Shaman. This deck was basically supposed to beat all the aggression that you usually face in the um, early, um, the early days of a new season. Everyone wants to climb up fast, and uh, so did I. So I threw this deck together from. Um, for the purpose of being able to handle early aggression. So, uh, most namely Hunter and Zoo, of course. Um, but also be able to kill control decks on the long run. Um, most noticeably um, Warriors. And maybe Handlocks if, uh, with the right draws. It still has two Earthshocks, it still has two Hexes. So, uh, a lot of stuff from Handlock can be um, taken down easily with the right draws and then go for some burst with uh, the double Doomhammer because they don't run Alakir to make the um, curve a little bit lower. Of course the fire elementals, um, pretty basic stuff, but uh, against dedicated control decks you could easily run out of steam. Um, it's a little bit easier against warriors because of the hero power of the shaman, but overall um, it was basically um, Tacked to beat most aggressive decks and to be a strong mid range D contender, uh, contender. And with the one bloodlust in there, it was a I was able to uh, catch a few opponents by surprise. If you have five minions, it's 15 damage all of a sudden, um, which can turn around uh, the game in your favor. But it's pretty was pretty much out of loss against priests. Second one is Hunter. Uh, I'm missing one card here, it's Flare. I just disenchanted all my Flares. Um, I didn't want to craft it again for this particular review, so a uh, recap. So uh, That's a card missing now with two mana. Um, not even sure if it should have been in the deck, but this was a deck that I played. I, like, I played a little bit Death Rattle uh, Shaman and then I wanted to wait until the new expansion comes out, but when uh, GVG was delayed in Europe. I had like half of a day, um, uh, which I usually planned for my um, arena marathon. And well, I just threw this deck together and uh, climbed a few more ranks with it. Um, probably the hound, uh, the flare should have been probably 
replaced by something else, as well as at least one of the Houndmasters. Um, two were is probably too much with a deck that only runs Web Spinners, Haunted Creepers, Animal Companions, and maybe Unleash for some kind of... Uh, uh, and of course, the Vanheimen for some synergy. But I want to add Leroy and Lothab to be a little bit more um, aggressive and to add a little bit more reach to the deck. Worked quite well, but well, this was before the expansion. Yes, the fair flare is missing, I know, I know. So then GVG came out and I did the whole arena marathon thing. Um, played like, I think 14 hours of arena or something. Um, with a break, so overall it was like... 12 hours played um, and I opened two growth tenders and I was like curious to try them out and my first initial initial thought were um, you have two wild growths you have two growth tenders so you can more consistently draw into a ramp to ramp up so you could um, cut a little bit more early game and add a little bit more late game um, these arcane nullifiers, I think they didn't perform too well. Oh, this one looks great in golden too, <laughs> at least. So they should have probably been sentient in this regard. <clears throat> the poison seeds I wanted to try out, like, you skip your early game, so you can wait for, I don't know, Headlock to play a giant and something else, turn 4 and 5, and poison seeds them or something, but I think it didn't perform too well. Uh, this was more an experiment overall, with a very greedy list in the end, even Kalthazad. I think I didn't find too many <coughs> applications for the Kalthazad. It can of course be amazing, um, and the general thought was, I don't know, that you... That you are early in the end game, so your minions are more likely to survive, and then you can just drop Kalthazad and revive them every every time and be annoying and such. But didn't work out too well. Um, this Ironbug Protector was uh, like I wanted to add one big more creature, and probably should have been Doctor Boom. Um, I'll talk about Doctor Boom a little bit later, I guess. Um, yeah, this was more an experiment. I did like I don't know. Maybe one or two ranks with it, and um, didn't like it too much. Maybe it, so the deck is by no means refined. Uh, also added a nourish for even more ramp or late game card draw, but um, overall I felt like it wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. But um, maybe a little tweaking would have been would have make this whole deck a little bit better. Um, then I wanted to try the GVG handlock and add it to Dark Bombs for the two Soul Fires, which is a little bit better synergy because you usually don't want to discard something. Um, was pretty much tech towards um, aggro with two Mortal Coils, two Dark Bombs, um, two Earthens, one little Exorcist even, uh, and the standard, a pretty standard list um, plus anti kill bot. Uh, problem with this was I ran into few control warriors and I couldn't even try my, my whole tax out. But I realized that with all the control warriors and also control paladins, um, I wanted to try something um, being tacked more towards control, which was a greedy handlock list. Um, I cut both the mortal coils and dark bombs and one power overwhelming for a little bit more reach and or synergy with uh, where did, where is it? Shadow Flame. The last deck had two Shadow Flames, I guess. Uh, it's kind of a preference call, but in a controlish meta uh, with a little bit less early game, you're not that likely to have your minions stay on the board. So I thought that one Shadow Flame would probably be enough and two Hellfires would make it better. Overall, like I said, very greedy list, uh, very few early game if you need it, um, but tech towards beating control, big game hunters in their um, just one sludge belcher, one replaced by faceless, um, black knight, sylvanas, rag, alex, draxes, two giant, both giants, so a lot of threats um, which can't be answered all by like double execute, double shield slam, and black knight or something. So there are even and big game hunter. Even then, it's there. Are, at least one threat should be left then. 
And the general theory was adding two empty keywords to a classic um, hand lock list should give you like um, the health that you need to um, survive against aggressive decks. Um, didn't feel that right though. I, I didn't. I, I don't think that this works out too well in the long run. You probably um, draw into one of them, but five slot is pretty clunky. Um, and if you don't draw the second one, the comeback is pretty hard to maintain, actually. Um, there have been a few more handlock lists, lists during the time, of course, and some of them even very, very successful at higher legend ranks. So I guess overall, um, you want a more refined list regarding handlocks. And then I had a short Hunter into Meso again, I think because of a daily quest, can't quite remember, which was this deck. Um, general thought was the four slot. I was unhappy with the two Huntmasters in the deck before, so I could add two Mechanical Eddies, which are kind of resilient minions and also pop up the Undertaker. Might have been a thought um, to replace them by um, piloted Treaders, which has like the same kind of synergy, but makes the minion more sticky. But on the other hand, like every two drop, if you play against two, a knife juggler just trades into the Yeti, and then you have a random two drop that just dies to a token or something. So overall, I'm not sure um, which one there is better. Probably both viable at the end. Um. Well, pretty much done at least then. Lothab instead of a second Belcher. Snake Trap, probably debatable if you can. Sometimes it's amazing, sometimes it's uh, easy to play around, depending on the board state and your opponent. Uh, but Explosive Trap, especially against controls, most of the time pretty much useless. Uh, then Ram Druid. I played one other kind of Ram Druid in between. No, uh, I should begin otherwise. Um, at this point I looked up some newer lists, what, what are other people playing? And I saw one of the most um, included new cards is Dr. Boom. So I thought I could as well just um, I could as well just uh, craft him because he's like a staple legendary right now and should fit into a lot of decks. Pretty versatile. So I thought, and if they nerf them, uh, if they nerf Dr. Boom, I can just disenchant it <laughs> later. So um, I tried a classical ramp to it, which was a little bit like uh, this one. Um, but I only have nine deck slots to show, so I won't show you, can't show you this right now. But overall, um, I tried it with Dr. Boom and Drag and such, and after that I saw on Dog stream, I think. Uh, this list, um, it's a little bit more than his classic, Ram Druid and um, Ancient of Wars are basically replaced by Yetis to make it a little bit faster and probably to make it a little bit better against Priests. Arizona Jones is quite amazing in this meta right now because you see a lot of Paladins, um, Warriors and Hunters, and um, Sometimes they play like their must of battle turn 4 to set up for a turn 5 um, Quartermaster and then they have this 1-3 weapon and you can just draw 3 cards out of Harrison Jones which is quite amazing. Especially given that you get a, body, a decent body for this too. Um, overall this was uh, the list, pretty much standard list, the only new card, here's the Sanjin, here's the Eddy. Um, only new cards, actually, yeah, well, it's Dr. Boom. Uh, I think it replaced Scenarius or something. Um, pretty old list, but worked quite well. Um, I didn't play this on stream, as well as the Miracle Rogue, from, also from Dog. Um, these were kind of my in-between decks when I had, like, did my, uh, had some spare time, like 10 or 20 minutes, uh, or between my research or something, then I just played one of these decks and climbed a few ranks with them. Um, new Miracle Rogue is of course with the nerfed gadgets and um, you have to add a little bit more stuff and now it's... Uh, at least this deck was going towards um, more light game. 
Uh, this Harrison Jones was supposed to be a sabotage, but I didn't have it and I didn't want to craft an epic just to try the deck out. Um, Harrison Jones was okay-ish, but in the playtesting I have to say sabotage would have... Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I can just show you this one. Wow, this looks bad. Destroy a random minion and combo and your opponent's weapons. A weapon. So I thought, well... Could just add Harrison Jones, it's amazing, draws you cards. Um, but the playtesting has shown that Sabotage would have been a lot better, especially in the handlock matchup where you can like kill a random giant or like, kill a giant um, with it, whereas Harrison Jones in these matchups is just a 5 4 body for 5, which doesn't help that much. Uh, could be amazing, like like I said earlier, against Paladins with their Master, but in this matchup, uh, with the Miracle Rogue, the game plan is a little bit different, so... Sabotage would have been better on the long run. Also against Stu and such, so... Um, but nevertheless, was was fun to play, and uh, worked quite well, until I think rank 2. Uh, so the last deck which did the final push to the top 100 legends from rank 2 was the Token Zoo. I've been asked in one of my arena runs, like, you have played an aggressive zoo and last uh, season you have played a hunter. Are there any fast decks still viable? And I thought, yeah, well, I've seen some of the more token styles, uh, style zoos. And um, furthermore, I had, like... Uh, Warlock quest, so came all together and I thought, well, I'll give it a try. Seems seems a little fun. And um, a little bit later, I heard that this deck was mainly popularized by Xixo. Um But I think he runs, yeah, he runs some special tag with uh, Tink Master over Spark. Like the whole uh, purpose of this deck is still the zoo purpose, like get small minions out and trade efficiently. All the trading, uh, efficient trading is um, boosted a little bit by um, all the kind of tokens that you can spawn. You have the Haunted Creepers, you have the Echoing Ooze, you have the Imps from Implosion, which also deal damage before. So you, uh, you have the Renewal X and you have a lot of small stuff. And like if your opponent plays, I don't know, Keeper of the Growth to kill your Knife Juggler, you just uh, run like, uh, you play, I don't know, the Dark Iron Dwarf on the Ooze and with one Spiraling and kill kill it off and have your 4-4 four, four body and just lost some tokens. Something like that. Um, some of them spawn even bigger minions, so overall um, quite a consistent deck. Um, got to, uh, to the top 100 legends very quickly. Um, like always, this is just a recap, it's not a guide and or it's uh, not a suggestion. Lo use these decks at this uh, at these ranks, but it's just a recap of what I did this season and what I came up with. Um, I guess the Tinkmaster Overspark fulfills a pretty simple purpose in this deck. Like, you have a lot of tokens, you have Echoing Oozes, you have Haunted Creepers, um, you have Imps from the Implosion, and if you can get a if you make your imp 1-1 one, one imp a 1-1 one, one squirrel, it doesn't matter. If you make your 1-2 one, ooze a 1-1 one, one squirrel, well, uh, happens. If you make your opponents, I don't know, fire elemental a 5-5, five, five, then it's still fine. If you make it a 1-1, one, one, it's pretty good. And if you make, now it comes, one of your tokens a 5-5 five, five devil soar, uh, then the tempo swing is really huge. Um, Found this out a little bit later and but wasn't eager to try, especially because I don't want to craft Tinkmaster Overspark for, just for this deck. Um, like I said, it's just a recap of what I did. Feel free to ask questions in the comments, like always, and um, I'll give you the year's recap a little bit later, so I just say thanks for watching and see you around next time. Bye bye.